Hi there! So, welcome to something a little bit different. Obviously you can tell I've never done something like this before, so this is going to be a little bit new, kind of interesting, we'll see how it goes. So basically a few years ago there was a plugin called Envelope Follower that could create these amazing looking visualizers that look like this. There's never really been an easy way to do it, because it was all... This is all fancy stuff that had to get mapped to other things and it was just, it was a complete nightmare. So what I decided to do was put together a single device. This device I've made will be able to help you guys generate your own visuals and it's going to look absolutely amazing. I can't wait to see what you guys make with this. Speaking of amazing visuals, this video's sponsor is Raid Shadow Legends. For those of you who haven't seen this game yet, Raid Shadow Legends is a brand new collection RPG game that's taking the mobile industry by storm. There's basically almost 10 million players worldwide have already downloaded the game within just the last three months. It has great graphics, strategic gameplay, huge boss fights, and an amazing storyline, and over 400 champions for you to collect and personally customize. Personally, my favorite champion so far is the Sniper. She looks absolutely amazing with this color scheme and just having a bow and arrow in a battle like this is just going to be absolutely badass. Personally what I love about this game is that everyone can find something for yourself. Collecting characters, some people really like progressing in the storyline and look it's got absolutely amazing graphics. Like I don't play mobile games very often but that's some good stuff. Personally I'd love to play this game against any of the other players out there but that's just me. This game is free to play right now like have you not got it yet? What? Don't just take my word for it, this game has more than 200,000 reviews and Raider has almost a perfect score on the Play Store. That is impressive. The game's been growing amazingly quickly and the new update is now live. And there's a new awesome loyalty and rewarding program for all the new players. Get a new daily login reward as well for the first 90 days in this game. You can find me in-game under the nickname Kaskobi, and if you're quick enough you actually get to join my clan as well. So what are you waiting for? Get into the video description, click on the special links, and you get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as part of the new player program to start your journey. Good luck, and I'll see you in the game. So let's get you guys hooked up with Echo. I'll give you guys the Echo download in the description. It will take you to this site. Basically, just hit the download Echo button. Now, well, the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to unzip this file that I've got down here. So there's two Echo devices. Essentially, there's a device that turns the audio signal into something that can be generated as a visualizer. And then there is the actual visualization generator, which is the receiver part, which acts as the MIDI device that then creates all of the MIDI data that you need for the visualizer. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create a new audio track in our Ableton Live set, just like that. And now on that audio track, we're going to place the very first echo device, which looks like this. Make sure you place down the actual echo object and not the receiver. So what you have here is the ability to change the input gain of your audio. You can change the maximum frequency of each band and you can cycle through the bands by coming up here. There's a little drop down menu. You can pick whichever band you want to modify like that. In its default settings, this is enough for eight bands, but there's enough to modify it if you have more than one launch pad or something like that. We'll get to that later. So I've just picked up a track to use for this project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it out of my downloads folder just like this and I'm going to drop it in that audio track. Now I said to you a second ago that you can put the echo device on the audio track like that, but you can also put it on the master track if you want to track every single bit of audio that gets passed through your project. And now we can see that if we start playing the track just like this, we're getting a signal coming through Echo almost immediately. Now what that's doing is it's turning it into data that the other part of Echo can actually understand. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make a MIDI track and we're going to grab that other device, we're going to grab the Echo receiver and we're going to put that on this MIDI track. From here what we're going to do is we're going to come over to this little output section, we're going to pick our Launchpad Pro and select it on channel 6. So now that we've got our Launchpad set up you should be able to play through here and look, there we go, we've already got a little bit of a visualizer going on which is kind of nice. So what we're going to do next is we're going to mess with how the visualizer looks. So there's a button here to duplicate to the edges and what that will do is when you turn that on. Now what we can do on top of that as well is if we head to my downloads page again and head to project manager and we go and grab output manager just like this. If we drag this after the echo receiver and select our launchpad just like that then you'll see that we now have control over the top row of the launchpad pro. So there's a few modifications that you can do to make it a little bit more your style. If you want to have a different gradient playing, what you can do is you can type in the velocities here. If you know the velocities, that definitely helps, but I'll put a velocity chart on the screen now if you need to know what they all look like. And if we now play that, 
you'll see that that gradient that we just made only shows up on this first row, which is kind of annoying. You don't really want to have to go through and make it on all the other rows because that's going to get really boring. So basically what you can do, if you hit the clone button right at the bottom here, it will send that band color data that you've just created to all of the other bands across the launch pad. Now there's a few other modification controls in here as well. So what we can do is if you come over to the rotation thing here, you can see that there's four different rotation types in the receiver. So you can flip it by 90 degrees. And then along with that as well, you can flip it horizontally. So you can layer these effects on top of each other to get some really cool looking visualizers that kind of look like pro launch as ones that look like this. Once we've done that as well, I've actually baked in a different style in here as well. So what we can do is go into the style section here. We can change it from default to centered, which will look like this. So that's how you turn an Ableton audio clip into being a visualized thing on your launchpad. There is also one more thing I want to cover, and that is that it's possible to take your entire PC audio and have that react with Echo as well. Now to achieve this, you need a virtual audio device, and on Windows there's a free one called VB Audio, but on Mac you need one called Sound Siphon, which I believe is paid, but it's still pretty good. Obviously neither of those two companies are sponsoring me to say that, I just think they're pretty good devices. So once you've got Sound Siphon or VB Audio set up, come back to Ableton, and we want to head over to the preferences. Now once we're in here we want to change our audio input device to audio capture. Well it's going to say audio capture for me, it might say VB audio or sound siphon or something like that for you, you know, whatever works. You want to put your virtual audio device as that. Now on this same audio track I'm going to make sure that the input is set to EXT in. I'm going to turn the track off. It's very important that you do that so that you don't get a feedback loop. Once we've done that we're going to change the monitoring mode over to in and now Echo is listening to our PC audio. Now once we've done that, I'm going to head back over to YouTube to the track that I found earlier. I'm going to play a little bit of it. There's Echo working. That's, that's about as simple as it gets. The other things you should know about Echo, by the way, are in the main Echo device itself, you have control over the Echo sample rate. Now the higher the number gets, the less reactive the visualizer gets but the less data it sends. There's only a certain amount of data that the launchpad can actually handle at one time, so you might find that decreasing it like that might actually help you save a bit of lag. So there you go, that is the absolute basics of Echo. Now what I'm gonna do for this part is I'm going to see if I can make a visualizer run across two launchpads. It is actually possible to daisy chain Echo across a couple of launchpads like that. So we're gonna try that now. Another launchpad. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna duplicate this MIDI track that we made for the receiver. Right, so now we've got two of the same track. I did that by hitting Command D. And I'm gonna change the output of this track rather than sending it to one launchpad, I'm gonna change it to Launchpad Pro 2. And in its current state, this is what it'll look like. Currently they're doing exactly the same thing, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change them both back to default style. Now if I want to change the colours of the bands on all of the launch pads at once, the same process applies as before. You make the colours and then hit clone and it'll change all of the bands on all of the launch pads. There we go, so we've got a new gradient and currently it will look like this. Now I'm going to hit clone and it will copy it across to every other band on all of the launch pads. Now you can still see that they're pretty much doing the same thing here. So what I'm going to do is add a second echo right after this first one. And we're going to use the first echo to control the left launch pad and the second echo to control the right launch pad. And the way we do that is we change the echo ID. And that's the little number in the top left corner that looks like this. So what I'm going to do is for the second echo, I'm going to change the echo ID from one to two. And on the MIDI output track that's controlling the right launch pad, I'm going to change this echo ID from one to two. So in this first echo what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop the maximum frequency of each of the bands trying to keep all eight bands within roughly a thousand hertz. I'm going to say that because of the amount of launch pads that I have. So I'll put the maximum frequency values that I'm using on the screen now. So then there you go, there's our first echo done. And for the second echo what we're going to do is we're going to change the minimum frequency of the first band to be roughly the same as the maximum frequency of the last band on the first echo. And then we're going to pick out eight bands between 1000 hertz and 20,000 hertz. And there we go, we are now done with that. So if we head on back over to YouTube and play this song now. So there you go, that covers everything you need to know about Echo, all of the colouring, all of the listening to PC audio, Ableton audio, and also how to daisy chain it. But if you guys do have any other questions though, please leave a comment down below, I'll get back to it as soon as possible, or message me on Discord, I'll leave my links right there, I think, something like that. Thank you guys so much for watching, I hope you like this new format, and I will see you guys in the next plugin overview video. Peace.
what I'm about to do is called a pro gamer move. <laughs>